riddle me this hypothetical situation. You're a businessman that needs to travel across central India in between metro cities. But you want a car that is fun, that is fast and that is comfortable. Well, sports tourers are the answer. But sports tourers in India, at least in the first hand market, they are very, very expensive. And they're not that many options anyway. But if you look at the second hand market, you can get yourself something like this, an Audi RS5. This has a roaring V8 engine that revs all the way up to 8,500 RPM. Talk about exotic. But is it any good in today's standards? Let's find out. Talking about how the RS5 looks, overall it is pretty understated and subtle but from the front is very imposing because it's got this massive front grille that in this car is finished in the same way the ORVMs are finished which is brushed steel and that is an RS thing. All RS products will be having this dual tone ORVM setup. Moving on towards the rear, the side profile is still understated not very flashy, no cuts, no vents, no crazy aero. It's just a subtle box style design all the way moving on towards the rear which has a swooping uh, rear coupe style end with a retractable rear spoiler. Overall, it is pretty understated to look at but you will definitely hear it coming. Now, the inside of the RS5 is a rather nice place to be in. You enter and it's rather low and the seats, since it is an RS product, it comes with sports seats. Really nice, good upholstering and very good thigh support. Now, cars of this age came filled with buttons and this RS5 is no different. You've got buttons for pretty much any option you would like, which brings me to a point I'd like to make which honestly just makes me feel how wrong Audi and BMW and Mercedes have got it nowadays with their interiors with just a single massive screen and all the options inside. I'd rather have a singular button that takes me to whatever option I want to choose. And this is a very nice place to be in. Overall, it is black finished with this brushed aluminum RS style and the steering wheel is nice and small with again, metal paddles that feel rather nice. It is a very nice place to be in and I'm sure that the sound system in this car is great but you won't be using it that much since this car has come with an optional extra that is six to seven lakh rupees worth back in 2014 that is the exhaust. It's a Capristo exhaust from factory and it sounds fantastic. Take a listen. That's a sweet noise, right? Let's check out what makes that noise. This is a 4.2 liter naturally aspirated V8 engine. Essentially, it is the 5.2 liter V10 engine that you get in the R8, but with two cylinders less. And it is a very free revving engine that revs all the way up to 8500 RPM, which sounds fantastic as you heard. It makes around 444 bhp in its stock form, but this one comes with an ABT tune. So now it makes around 470 bhp, which sounds like a lot. So let's just go out and experience that. If you'd like a super cool sports car with a massive V8 in the front, then you're in luck because this RS5 is on sale on TDH Classifieds and it's part of our TDH Verified section, which means we've physically inspected it and made sure that it is in a brand new condition so that you can just buy it off and drive it and enjoy it like a brand new car. So what are you waiting for? Check out TDH Classifieds and get yourself the car of your dreams.
This engine is a screamer. More on that later. This fat V8 is mated to a 7-speed DSG gearbox. And this is a little special because this can... Because this can distribute its power in a very different manner. It is a 40-60 split and it is predominantly a rear biased car. But what's, what's magical about it is that it can send up to 70% of all of its power to the front or 85% of all of its power to the rear. And it's also got torque vectoring, which means in the rear wheels, uh, in corners, it completely eliminates that understeer since it can find which wheel on the inside is uh, losing traction and uses the brakes in order for you to keep a nice tight line. <laughs> This 8,500 RPM redline is intoxicating. The engine surges rather linearly all the way up. Since it is naturally aspirated, it does take us a little while to reach all the way up. But once you are anywhere above 5,000 RPM, this engine just loves to scream and it delivers its power It delivers its power in such a dual tone. Below 5000 RPM, it is sedate, it is linear. 5000 to 8500, it is monstrous. It just wants to drop all of that torque down. And since the gearbox it's, is so nice, shifting through the paddles is very nice. Plus, when you enjoy the paddles, you can hear that lovely burble which makes this engine such an enjoyable experience. Now, when this car was launched, it had its competition cut out for itself. And by that, I mean its competitors were far superior. The E92 M3 was lighter, it was faster, and it handled better. So was the C63. It was much more leery, and it had a massive engine, which arguably sounds nicer, but this is so much better as an all-rounder. It handles the roads nicely. It's not harsh to ride like the M3 is genuinely on the roads, nor is it leery like the C63. So it can still do normal trips. This is definitely the best package in a long time that can do the sporty bits to an extent and also still give you that excitement from a raw, naturally aspirated V8. And this in the second hand market now could cost you anywhere between 35 to 40 lakh rupees, which in my opinion is as low as they're going to get since now the modern RS5 comes with a twin turbocharged V6. There is no other V8 coupe that you can get at this uh, perspective. This is honestly a good investment since you're going to be able to buy this car at what its bottom of its value is, 35 to 40 lakhs. And remember, you're not going to get another V8 in this kind of format for a long time or maybe ever. So this could appreciate since its engine is so special. In terms of grip, the car handles fantastically. In fact, it is a rather no-nonsense car. It can do the point-and-shoot thing very easily. However, the feedback is what brings you down. The E92 M3 is great at 
delivering all of that feedback from what's happening on the road through the steering wheel through your fingers and letting you know what's going on underneath this steering wheel is not that lively but that's an audi thing and if you can omit the lack of directness from the steering wheel the car can still perform pretty well it is very planted through corners thanks to its mechanical grip and also since it is quite plush you're not that intimidated to open the tabs all in all all in all if you are looking for something fun but something that's not daunting i think the rs5 is a great option for people who just want a car that is a nice experience that's not larry that's not scary and that is still comfortable to do long distances in because this at the end of the day is an outright grand tourer thank you so much for watching do let us know what your thoughts on the rs5 is and if you had a choice between the c63 the rs5 and the e92 m3 which one would you pick my op my choice is pretty clear i'll see you guys in the next one peace bye